that's the single greatest defense against anatomical inaccuracy. Just say it's stylized. Dude, why does he have six fingers? It's stylized. Got it. oh. Let's take this trash panda, oh. for oh. example. Hi, boys. This one's for you. Oh man, oh my God, I'm winded. All right guys, you know the deal. If you guys want your own volleyball, this burp is available for three weeks only. Link down below. <sighs> now let's go take a look at some art tutorials on TikTok. Let's see what the babies are learning. I am so excited. So you wanna know how to shade your drawings. Luckily for you, Daddy Ashy is here to pinch off a turd of drawing knowledge into your gaping mouth. So our first shading method is called hatching. It is a real humdinger. It really rushes the blood to my penis. Uh, this is a drawing I made. Huh? What the f It's too early for this sh That was a solid one out of 10. Get out of here. Lip tutorial. I like it. You're starting with the lines, okay? A little bit of soft blending there. That looks very nice. Adding a little bit of detail here. That's good. Look at that. That is nice. Okay, a little bit more blending. A little bit more detailing. Ooh. Ooh, that's, that's nice. These lips look quite g g g I love the fact that your process doesn't emphasize all the individual lines on the lips, like the little lip wrinkles. We don't need that. It feels very liberating. I love this process. Great job, 10 out of 10. If you're like me and you used to draw trees like this, that's actually a broccoli. So let me show you my secret trick to draw realistic trees. You're gonna start with the trunk and then draw a bunch of circles like this where you want the branches and leaves to be in. Make sure the circles overlap a little bit. And okay. now you're gonna draw this weird okay. little lines like this over and over, trying to make it oh, darker wow. where the circle. Add more weird tiny lines in random spots to create some random shadows. Now you can draw some actual little branches poking out, but this time you're gonna actually draw the little leaves. And just make these branches a little bit more detailed. And as you can see, it kind of looks like everything is made of these little leaves and not the weird lines we were doing before. For the trunk, you can hatch these fast lines like this, making the left side darker and also the top part like right under the leaves and it's like a draw trees that is a great end result but the leaves that's insane this must have taken forever i applaud you for this i wouldn't be able to do this halfway through scribbling one of these circles i would be thinking about how to make my next oc <laughs> and my next traumatized oc with daddy issue now if you'll excuse me just one final tip for people who want to draw trees if you look at the trunk of a tree it's usually a bit thicker at the bottom and as it grows upwards it goes from thick to thin to thin thinner, thinner, very thin branches. So keep that in mind, 10 out of 10. Something that'll help you a lot with your drawing is putting down a mid-tone before you start. And I usually do this with willow charcoal because it's nice and smooth and you can create a nice consistency. So after I've drawn it onto the page, I'll smooth it out with either my hands or a cloth like this. Ooh, this is so satisfying, I love that. So as you can see here, you can smudge it around super easy because willow charcoal is quite light and you can also erase into it to bring out your highlights and if you don't like what you've done you can always smudge over it i'll show you how that looks here yeah a clean palette. Hope this helps. man this makes me miss charcoal drawings so much those were the good old days here's the thing though there's actually benefits to doing this even when you're doing digital art for a lot of beginners when you're starting on a white canvas you're essentially starting on a background that is as bright as can be so because of that bright background being there sometimes you actually misjudge the colors you put down and you think they're darker than they actually are but if you start with a mid-tone you can judge your colors a little bit more accurately that's why a lot of artists start with a gray background anyways dude thanks for bringing back my childhood memories 10 out of 10 even if you've have never drawn a specific creature before, you can use this simple approach to study them. Oh. Let's take this trash oh. panda, for oh. example. This is so nostalgic. Look at that pencil sharpening. Oh, this makes me happy. I start by drawing a central line, which acts as a guide for symmetry. Then I sketch the biggest shapes I can see, an oval for the head and these two shapes for the paws. Then I add middle-sized shapes like the one for the mouth, two triangles for the ears and small circles for the eyes. Once I'm satisfied with the overall position of these shapes, I begin adding more details. I divide the paw shapes into individual fingers, make adjustments if needed. Starting with the darkest values, I gradually add shading, working my way through mid-tones. For the finest details, I switch to a softer pencil. A mechanical pencil with 2B lead comes in handy for fine lines, hatching or tiny details. I often use a blending stump. Pinpoint erasing like for white whiskers, so don't be intimidated if you haven't drawn some animal before. Observe the reference, embrace the simplicity of shapes, don't worry about the mistakes, and let your pencil bring them to life. Gabby, your shape language Gabby. 
is incredible. It's absolutely amazing. Look at the curved line on this chicken. That just, that's, mwah, that just tickles my pickle. I feel like it's very important to break things down into simple shapes, work from big down to small. I think you hit the nail on the head here. 10 out of 10. Gosh, wow. Mindful drawing as opposed to what? Mindless drawing? Actually, I do that a lot. It's a pattern, yeah? This is... Okay, so, ooh, that's pretty. So as a mindless drawer, I'm kind of confused, but you know what? I guess this just helps you calm down and relax a little bit if you just want to doodle on a piece of paper. So that's good. Art has different uses for different people and also great music choice. This is eight out of 10. Hand tutorial, okay? Oh my God, why are you so aggressive towards your paper? <laughs> Oh, wow. Oh, 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 whoa. Someone said, I'm so sorry people are saying this is bad. Um, it is bad. What do you mean? No, I'm just kidding. The, uh, I really do like the way you simplified the palm and then this little triangle shape for the thumb. There usually is a bit of a curve here at the tip of the fingers. So even if your art is a little bit stylized, if you can mimic that curve, it gives your art a little bit more believability. Seven out of 10. Oh my God. Another one of these X and check mark tutorials. All right. Let's see what you got. Okay. Yeah, see that? That's the wrinkles I was talking about earlier, right? You don't want to do that. Oh, wait. <laughs> no. Huh? Okay, you fully had me in the first half here. I thought that X was actually supposed to be the X because it's not good. That's going to be a 2 out of 10 for me. Pencil. Oh, 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 oh. How to paint rain. Today, you're going to need these six colors and whatever your favorite brushes are. I then mix up a palette that consists of a light gray, a dark gray, a sky blue, and two shades of green. While looking at my reference photo, I block in my grass and my tree line. I mix my two grays together for the shadows of clouds that are further away and closer to the horizon line. Afterwards, I fill in all the white spots left in the canvas with my lightest gray, which leads us to something like this. I then cover everything with a second layer of paint, before moving on to painting in my puddles. Okay, I won't be able to show this whole video because it's like two minutes long, but. It. Lastly, we're gonna take our smallest brush and that mid gray and start painting in evidence of raindrops. Okay. You do not need to paint every single raindrop that exists. Just hint at little moments here and there where the sunlight catches a raindrop this falling down from the sky. Reminds me of Bob Ross. All that hard work is gonna lead us to something oh. like this. Um, okay, you know what? You definitely got the overcast look down. It's dark, it's moody, but you probably need a little bit more raindrops for it to look more convincing. See, what I would personally do to make this a little bit more convincing is I would take this layer of raindrops, I would duplicate it, I would flip it around horizontally, transform it a little bit, and then copy more of them and do the same process. And in like five minutes, you'll have a whole bunch of good raindrops. <laughs> oh wait, you do traditional art. Oh yeah, I'm gonna show you guys how to make a Rosetta. Am I in art tutorials or what? Can you please draw a creepy eye? I know it's a weird suggestion. All right. Circle, another circle inside and a smaller one shaped with lines. Curved hooded line, a droopy line below, another layer inside. Oh. Veins in eye. Oh. Outline, I use this. Uh, oh. Some more sketchy lines, color in a round eye and done. Mm. <laughs> it's not just me, right? Do you see what I, this can't just be me. This, this looks like something else. 10 out of 10, I am traumatized. Ooh, that is a beautiful color. It's gotta be one of my favorite colors, that purple. Oh my God. Oh, that's nice. Look at this, wow. What are you drawing here? What are you drawing? Oh, what is that? Grass? Oh, is it a palm tree? It's a palm tree. Hmm. Oh, it's grass. It's nice, it's simple, it's beautiful. Anybody can do it and you went through the whole process. That is a 10 out of 10 for me. Bro, you did what? <laughs> That's it. That's crazy. How you guys make this look so easy? That's a 10 out of 10. This looks more real than a real strawberry. This is how to use Mid Journey to create a consistent art style for your brand, your business, your passions, whatever it is. Step one, go to Mid Journey and type in slash settings. Choose the correct Mid Journey engine you want to use. Number two, this is the most important. Include the name of the artist whose art style you want to use in your prompts every time. So if we're going to create a one piece anime style character, we need to say the name of the one piece artist in our prompt. 
So we'd say inspired by Ichiro Oda, or we'd say Ichiro Oda anime style. Now, if you want a list of artists to include in your mid journey prompts, how to type text into a text box. That's crazy. Drawing tutorial. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. That's gotta be like one of the creepiest drafts I've ever seen. All right. Pretty impressive considering how this all started with a bunch of balls. Couple tips I wanna give you guys here. Uh, usually you wanna draw a center line down the face just to make sure that the features are relatively symmetrical. So here you can see that the bottom of the nose, it doesn't really line up with the top of the lips. Now, obviously every person is different. There might be people who are actually built like this, but just as a general guide, it's always good to have a center line down the face. Makes it easier for you. Number two, you gotta pay attention to your values. I see this a lot, especially when it comes to sketches. You notice how the eyelashes are the absolute darkest part on this whole drawing. So it looks a little bit jarring, looks a little bit out of place. When you're placing that darkest value, you wanna make sure that it's present throughout the entire drawing and not just on one specific part like the eyelashes. Otherwise, great job with those balls. That's a seven out of 10. What is this? Basic, simple, oh, stars? Um, What the, how are your lines so straight? With a pen too? That's insane, what the? Oh my God, are you kidding me? Dude, your pen control, your hand-eye coordination is nuts. 10 out of 10. Simple things to draw when stressed out. All right, let's go. Another one of these therapeutic drawings. Let's see what we got here. I'm gonna take a guess. That's a boat. No, it's not a boat. What is that? <laughs> I'm... This is probably the most confused I've ever been in my life, but if it de-stresses you, I respect it. I, I, uh... <laughs> Body drawing tutorial. And once again, we are starting with the balls. Everything just starts with the balls. She thick. Uh, aren't the boobas a little too high there? You know what? It's stylized. It's fine because it's stylized. Always remember that, guys. That's the single greatest defense against anatomical inaccuracy. Just say it's stylized. Dude, why does he have six fingers? It's stylized. It's all right. It's cool. It's a cool process. Seven out of ten. For anyone who thinks they can't draw, scribble out a baseline, scribble out a tree and trunk and branches. Very interesting style so far. It's all scribbles. Make some sections dark and oh my God, that's actually really good. What the, f that's lovely. Like you take a step back from the page and you can instantly tell that's a tree. It's got lighting and everything. <laughs> that's sick. That's really good. 10 out of 10. All right guys, that's it for today's TikTok tutorials. What did we learn today? We learned how to type text into a text box. <laughs> Drop this video a like if you enjoyed it and learned something new. And if you guys want to see more videos like this, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Check out the burb. It's linked below. With all that being said, I'll see you guys on the next video. That's insane. How to type in the prompt. <laughs> Y'all need tutorials for everything now, huh? What's next? How to breathe. How to exist. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I need a tutorial on that. It's, it's, it's hard. <laughs> Look at my boy. He's so fluffy. <laughs> oh, can't wait to cook you.